Hi guys, welcome to Monetize. It's time to record the new weekly forecast video for the week starting on November 7th. So let's begin with dollar index as usual. So we have opened the dollar index chart and I'm starting with the weekly time frame. In fact, from the monthly time frame. So let me explain what's going on the monthly time frame. Starting from the bottom, if we look at the moment, first push up, second wave down, third up, fourth down, and now it is in the fifth wave. And most likely in the longer run, means in the coming weeks or the week, uh, months, it is going to touch the previous high, which is around 120. And I've also drawn two parallel channels, the rising parallel channels. So first I've started from the bottom and I've drawn here and the uh, candles or the price it has uh, cleaned or it has crossed above the first channel. So I have duplicated. So it has gone to the second deck now and it is inside the second rising channel. And if you look at the pattern, this is the base and this is the BOS. BUS means break of structure to the upside. Now we all understand as per the rule, after market breaks above the structure level, it comes down for the correction. So this, uh, so the rising channel boundaries will help us to understand till what level the dollar index may correct to the downside. Although during the last week, we had interested announcement from the Federal Reserve and we had positive NFP numbers. Still, dollar is going down. Uh, to be honest, I didn't find time to go through the reports and uh, most likely even the tone of the Federal Reserve was hawkish, which is in favor of dollar. So in the longer run, nothing has changed for dollar. Dollar remains bullish. It is only, I think, short term correction because after the news, uh, after the announcement of interest rates, um, what I can understand, there would have been a uh, flood of buying orders by the retail traders in the market for dollar. So the institutional order flow is going against. They are just bringing it down for the corrective pattern and later on they will again uh, start raising it. Okay, so this is the only uh, clarification I can give at the moment. And there's a famous quote in trading uh, world. We say, buy the rumor, sell the news. Means it was uh, it was very clear to the entire world that Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates one more time. So it was it was a no brainer. It wasn't a secret anymore. So most of the institutional players, they bought uh, dollar way back at the rumor during the time of rumor and they started selling immediately after the announcement. Whereas the retail traders, they must have started buying after the announcement. So this is the only logic I can apply right now. And technically DXY has started falling down in a corrective pattern. If you remember uh, in my last week's video, I've also shown a bullish flag, a downward channel on a lower time frame, a corrective channel. And I've told you uh, there is a, a very high probability that DXY will touch the upper boundary and it will bounce lower. And it did exactly the same. So right now I've applied FIB from the rock bottom, from the recent uh, low, the swing low to the recent swing high. And let's zoom in to check the FIB levels. So as for the FIB levels, the first level of 23% is around 108.76 followed by 38.2, which is also coming at the um, uh, rising parallel channel lower boundary or the mid boundary because we have two channels together. It's a duplication of channels. So I'm talking about this zone. So we can say that DXY may come down towards 105 level in the coming days or weeks. This is as per the higher time frame. Now let's move to weekly. Now on the weekly, I still have the downward parallel channel in place, which I've drawn in my last video. So see, 
as anticipated it touched the upper boundary and started rolling downwards so the first level in place is around 108.5 and followed by 105.5 or 105 so we can see dxy rolling down in the coming days and weeks and as per macd on daily as per the uh, macd lines histogram everything is still bearish and this is the downward channel which is very very clear on a daily time frame so here it touched the upper boundary made a fake breakout and immediately uh, followed by a big bearish candle engulfing candle so this one bearish candle it has engulfed the previous two candles the bullish candles so it's a very very bearish scenario in the short term for dollar now let's quickly move down to four hourly four hourly again everything is bearish uh, turn to the bearish side after touching the upper boundary and currently it is uh, around this level and it has actually crossed the level so even if it takes a bounce in the coming days it would be a short term bounce reaching this resistance and the, it will start rolling down again so until it remains under this level which is around 112.5 to 113 it remains bearish to me so this is all about dollar index now i'll quickly take you to a website which is called baby pips and what i've done uh, i've opened currency strength meter on baby pips now look here as on date okay as on date the strongest currency is new zealand dollar followed by aud so here is new zealand dollar followed by aud and the third strongest is cat euro jpy and chf they are sort of neutral right now and the most bearish us dollar and gbp so it makes sense to buy new zealand pairs it makes sense to buy aud pairs it makes sense to buy cad pairs whereas it makes sense to buy gbp pair to sell gbp pairs and sell usd based pairs so i've shortlisted a few technical setups based on the currency strength meter from baby pips so the first setup is for gbp aud now because pound is bearish to me so i'll say that we'll look for sell trade for gbp aud so now i'm moving to gbp aud let me find gbp aud here gbp aud okay so we are on the weekly chart of pound australian dollar so as per the charts it formed bullish divergence on macd as well as lines and it also formed bullish convergence Me means it broke above the bo structure the middle point of w pattern this is w pattern i'm talking about now after as per the rule once we get a breakout we wait for the retest retest to the fibonacci levels so let's apply fib levels here so i'm opening fib retracement starting from the bottom and taking it to the top and as per the fib levels the 38 percent is not yet reached 50 percent is here so i'm looking for the retracement up to 5261.8 area this area and this area is also coinciding with the highest volume the cluster of volume okay so i have one more tool to check the volume profile so what i'll do i'll pick a volume profile measurement tool from here which is fixed range volume profile profile as i draw my fib retracement tool as i plot my fib retracement tool same way i'll start from the lowest point take it to the highest and leave it so we'll we'll get the horizontal bars and the area the cluster with the highest volume is around here so it's again coming in between 50 percent retracement to 61.8 levels so there is a very high probability that market will retest 
the same highest volume area or it may even break below the highest volume area to clean the orders and then continue to the upside. So in the shorter run, now because AUD is stronger than pound, we have checked on the currency strength meter. New Zealand is stronger than most of the currencies. So it makes sense to sell GBP AUD. And the technical setup is also in favor of short term sales. Moving down to daily now. Now as per daily, uh, we'll just get rid of this volume profile. We do not need it anymore. And again, turning back to the line chart. So this is the M formation. M formation at the top, a higher high and a lower high formation on MACD lines. And this is the BUS level. So if I mark the midpoint of M, this is here. So the market, the price has broken below the midpoint of M, which is the BUS level to the downside. So what I've done, moving to candles again, let me clean the unwanted lines. So I've drawn one more level here, starting from this resistance. So the resistance here, resistance here. So I've just taken it to the, uh, like I've drawn a horizontal line at this level. So most likely if we get a retest of this level, I'll look for sales and I'll be targeting uh, this would be my first target. So target one uh, should be around 1.7335. Target two should be around 1.7065. And I'll be protecting my stop loss somewhere here above. Okay, so to join the sell trade, we should move down to four hourly time frame. Now on four hourly, the red line, the uh, previous uh, resistance, once broken, it turns into support. And now again, it is broken to the downside. So it will act, it should act as a resistance. So a retest towards this area, then I'll be looking for the sell trades. Got it? So uh, GBP AUD, look for short term sales. If you want further down to one hourly, everything is still bearish. So this is the bearish trend line. I'm looking for the retest, maybe here, maybe here, and then it should roll down to the downsides. So I hope GBP AUD is clear. Now, as per the currency strength, uh, strength meter, New Zealand is the strongest and Euro is currently sitting uh, in the neutral zone. So it also makes sense to look for Euro New Zealand sell trade. Although we were involved in Euro New Zealand sell trade in the last week, we collected a um, good amount of profit at a certain level. Now it again, it, uh, it, it's again, it's giving uh, an opportunity to take one more trade to the sell side. So let me discuss, let me open the chart for Euro New Zealand. Moving to weekly and I'm just clearing all the drawings here. So we got a beautiful W formation. Uh, it, it broke above the midpoint, the BUS structure, the BUS level, the structure here, and now it's time for the pullback. So we have to apply the Fib retracement starting from the base. So this is the base here. I'm starting from this base, taking it to the recent high. And I'm also applying the same volume profile tool here. So we are adding more factors to our confluence. So we are adding conferencing factors, which gives us the same direction. So it helps in building the confidence while taking the trade. So same, from the same lowest point to the recent high. And now, if you notice, we have the highest volume around this area. So which is exactly in between 38.2 to 50% retracement area. And currently we are at the same level, okay? So we'll look on the lower time frames, if the market has reached to the uh, support level and it is uh, preparing itself for the upturn or it is uh, still uh, bearish and it may continue to the downsides. So I'm switching to daily now. And as per daily, I do not see anything bullish because currently the MACD is clearly bearish. We, uh, we can see the strength on MACD histogram. Uh, MACD cross and the lines, they are still bearish. So if we turn it into a line chart, uh, we will have some important levels. We'll get some important levels here. So this is the one. 
and here mm, I can see this one okay so these are the two levels which are uh, which are above the current price level okay so it, they should act as a resistance so there is a very high probability that if we get a bullish bounce in the like at the opening of the new week we should look for the sell opportunity and the invalidation would be a break above this level and then it may continue higher so please always keep in mind the invalidation as well because uh, the market is full of surprises so if it breaks above the resistance it will turn bullish so this is how it looks like on a lower time frame uh, give me a second i want to get rid of this volume profile thing and now i'm moving to four hourly again so we have marked the levels of resistance we are around support zone as per the fib levels and even as per the previous peak of the w the midpoint of the w here this is the midpoint i'm talking about which i've shown on the higher time frame so if we get a bounce to the upside let me do one thing let me also mark the fib extension starting from the top to the downside so usually market continues uh, towards the 200 percent of fib extension area so the 200 percent is here which is again coming very close to the 61.8 fib retracement area getting rid of all the unwanted lines and marking the trend line to the downside so the plan is if it if it bounces up towards the falling trend line or towards the uh, the resistance area i will take it as an opportunity to sell with a stop loss above this resistance zone and i will look for the targets around this region if i talk if I speak out the numbers, it should be around 1.6456. In round number, you can say 1.6500. Currently, we are sitting at 1.6781. So a bounce up means we should sell around 1.7 and we should take profit around 1.65. So it's a very good opportunity to make 500 pips in the upcoming days and weeks. So we have covered pound AUD, we have covered Euro New Zealand and the next currency pair I'm going to cover is GBP JPY okay as per weekly we have a formation of higher high now it's not yet completed, but we are witnessing a slowdown on MACD histogram because the latest histogram has turned lighter green in color. So it is a slowdown scenario for the bulls. And we also have a bearish candle, sort of engulfing candle on the weekly time frame. But currently we are at a very crucial support level. Very, very crucial. So the bearish divergence on the weekly, it's not yet completed, but it's very close to be completed. Right now, we are sitting at a very very crucial support level so the previous resistance uh, now turning into support let's move on to daily see on the daily the last candle was bullish which is coming exactly at the support levels so if if it bounces to this red line area and this line is the resistance line mm, one second i have to turn it into a line chart again yeah so this is the area this is the resistance so a formation of a break of structure followed by lower low formation continuing bearish divergence so a weakness in bullish momentum so i will consider a bounce towards this i will consider a bounce towards this area as an opportunity to sell in the short term so now i'm moving to go early and turning into candles again 
So see here, we have a bearish divergence. We have bearish divergence on four hourly, which is looking like a containing bearish divergence on the higher time frame on daily. A break below the structure level, reaching the previous support area. So there is a very high probability that it will bounce to the same area or maybe a bit higher and then continue to the downside. So how we can approach? So we should apply, we should apply Feb retracement starting from the recent top to the recent low. And I will look for the bearish pattern around this area, 61, which is also coming very close to the uh, resistance line. So I will look for the bearish pattern on lower time frame like 15 minutes or maybe 78.6 and then we can get into a sell trade. So GBB, JPY remains bearish to me and the next target would be around this area 155. So if we take a sell around 165, we also have a support in between which is around this area. So 160. So if we can sell around 165, again, we can target 160 and it's again going to be a 500 pip move. So we have discussed a couple of currency pairs, dollar index. Now it's time to discuss gold. Now, because dollar is getting weaker, so definitely gold turns bullish. I'll start my analysis from the monthly time frame. So what I've done here, I've turned it into a monthly chart and on the monthly chart, this is the base. I'm talking of this level. So this is the base because from here, it triggered the bullish move. One second, guys. Yeah, so this is the base and from here, it triggered the bullish move to the upside which broke above the previous resistance around this area. Okay, so I will apply FIB starting from the base, this point to the recent high. Now look at the FIB levels. 50% FIB retracement is coming exactly on 1617, which acted as support multi -time, multiple times recently. So we are on the monthly chart right now. We got first bounce here, second bounce here, and third time once again, okay? So 1617 is acting as a very, very strong support based on the FIB retracement numbers. And because we are witnessing a slowdown or loss of bullish power in dollar, so it is good for gold because gold is inversely correlated to dollar. Moving to weekly now, let me zoom out a bit. Okay, so moving to weekly now, on the weekly uh, slowdown scenario on MACD histogram, clearly slowdown scenario. It's a continuing bullish divergence on MACD histogram and we have bullish price action at the FIB levels. So the next level in sight to the upside is if we talk about if we talk as per the FIB numbers, then it should be 1725. So the next upside level inside is 1725. If we apply the FIB retracement to the downside from the recent peak, so this is the recent peak on weekly. So I'll start plotting FIB retracement from top to bottom. And the FIB 50% is around 1711. 61 is 1734 and 78 is 1766. So first target, the confidence zone, magnet zone, duplication zone, whatever you say, is around this area. Followed by 78% level. So these are the two levels inside to the upside. moving to daily now now we have this bullish divergence here honestly it failed in the previous days now we have equal bottom double or triple bottom with another bullish divergence 
and a very very sharp reversal in play if i mark a falling trend line starting from this peak which is the weekly high then currently the price has not broken above, above the falling trend line but there is a very very high probability that it's going to break very soon in the upcoming week so once it breaks this trend line we can look for the retest and we can aim for the levels here so which is around 1720 so this is the plan for gold in the upcoming week moving to four hourly everything looks bullish here super bullish for gold because it has created triple bottom first bounce second bounce and third bounce it has also broken above the structure level so we have two options either we let it break the trend line first look for the retest and then enter into a buy trade or we if it bounces lower let it create a higher low which would be the new base and we will jump into a buy trade at at that level and again the target would be around 1720 so this is the plan for gold now i'll be talking about nifty starting from the weekly uh, i'll i'll try to cover it in a very very fast manner because uh, i have already recorded for 26 minutes as per the weekly macd histogram they are still rising up with full power full bullish momentum and uh, and because of the weakness in dollar and multiple other factors it has also broken above the falling trend line it has cleaned the horizontal resistance and now i've marked two levels here 17935 and 18093 so as far as it remains above 17935 and 18093 everything looks bullish as per the fib extension which i have marked from this bottom as per the fib extension the first target inside is 18454 18450 to round off and that's it i think i don't have anything more on the lower time frame weekly is bullish let me quickly run through and daily is still bullish for early is also bullish so this is the first support which is around 18090 18100 ultimately at 17935 17950 levels so until it holds above 17935 my plan is to buy on the dips on one early as well i do not see any signs of slowdown so any opportunity any pullback should be taken as opportunity to buy in the upcoming days and weeks so i hope guys i've made all the uh, I've, I've covered most of the instruments i've made all the points uh, clear to you it's if you still have any doubts you can get back to me okay and guys please show your support share the thumbs up subscribe to my channel and uh, good luck for the new trading week all right take care and bye bye